Our spiritual practice today comes from, uh, from John Templeton's book, and uh, it's related to the first video today. The technique for achieving forgiveness is simple. Release, let go. Um, and so at its simplest, this practice of Sir John's, which he refers to as total forgiveness, uh, is simple and radical. As soon as any perceived wrong arises in our awareness, just let it go, release it. Do not allow it to uh, fester within. For the sooner we cleanse ourselves of the toxins of hatred, of anger, resentment, and grievance through unconditional forgiveness, according to Sir John, the sooner and longer we will experience the many personal and social benefits of, uh, of forgiveness. Now, given what I said in the first video about us, uh, Sir John's practice, uh, and given the various conditions uh, and, and considerations on forgiveness that have been offered in the philosophical, theological, and scientific literature, it's pretty clear that Sir John's practice dispenses with all conditions, all preconditions. Sir John's practice does not demand or depend upon the repentance of the wrongdoer or of a change of heart of the wrongdoer. It doesn't, however, dispense with the notion of reconciliation, but it's so radical, perhaps, that his view of forgiveness is so radical that, of course, it has psychological benefits, but that the very simple act of forgiving others without conditions itself kind of subtly alters through my own uh, mental and spiritual action the very structure of the universe, and that perhaps in some mystical place of union, uh, of one soul with all souls that already begins to affect a change in the one uh, who I cannot force to change, even through my acts of forgiveness. So forgiveness is not just a passive, uh, nor just a way of feeling better about oneself for, for, for Sir John. It, it is also a way of transforming and changing life at its very source, at the very sources of our mental life meditative and contemplative experience does tend to show that there's no division between self and other. That in some profound sense, not only are we one with the divine, with being, with God, but we're all one with each other. Uh, it's, it's as if you are I and I am you. And that's, a, of course, not an everyday way of thinking about life. That's an altered perception of life. And practicing forgiveness is a way of varying our understanding of life. One can see that there's an interplay, a, a, a kind of nice harmony between the various practices that I have been deriving from, uh, from the book that is the, written by uh, John Templeton. So... Um, the practice of forgiveness, if we wanted to take this upon ourselves, if only for the health benefits, um, it's, it, it's helpful to have a ritual. It's helpful to have a way of doing it. And um, I will suggest one of my own, a practice of my own. And um, uh, remember, the technique for achieving forgiveness is simple, release and let go. And so the practice uh, is a ritual that basically has two, two elements. And the two elements are the focus of forgiveness and the act of forgiveness. So we basically have, if you will, forgiveness focal points, and then we have the act of forgiveness itself. And one way to do this is this is not a, a, a purely reflective practice where we keep our eyes open and think about something, and it's not a purely sit under the Bodhi tree and meditate sort of practice either. It's somewhere halfway in between. It could be helpful to practice this with one's eyes closed, and it's, but it's also somewhat active meditation as well. And so the forgiveness focal points are things that happened such as, for instance, if we were to close our eyes, and as I mention each of these points of focus, and I'll do it somewhat slowly, we might call to mind some events or activities or persons, such as events in, in the moment, something that just happened, a forgiveness focal point, maybe the last five minutes or so something happened that a person did something that could, could actually be seen as a wrong, we don't do anything with that. Just remember what happened recently. And another focal point is 
of our events is events in the past. And we could we may be able to enumerate many events in the past. And of course, these practices, it's not necessarily the best thing just to dive into them because we may bring up matters and events that can be disturbing or even traumatic. And if that occurs, you, you probably would like, might want to seek out the wise counsel of trusted people in your environment. Actions of some particular individual, yes. The actions of groups or institutions, we may not think of this, but often we have ang resentments and against uh, our aspects of our upbringing, perhaps. Maybe we can think of some of the institutions of our childhood that can shape our entire future understanding of, say, the religion we grew up with. Maybe that what our experiences as a child still shape our reaction to a religion that may be completely different when experienced as an adult. Perhaps ourselves. Not only have we wronged others, but we may have wronged ourselves in the past. And of course, others in general. Um, and so uh, I've mentioned a lot of benefits. So now that we have this kind of uh, this list or at least a group of people and events that may have wronged us in the past, we can begin to actually practice forgiveness. And this may be no more complicated than a Sir John's suggestion of just releasing and letting go. And so let's see if we cannot do that, uh, just release and let go uh, some, some resentment, some anger, uh, some, some, some even hatred, perhaps even a deeper word for events that occurred in the past. This can happen at various moments during the day as well. We may be driving or walking along or working at some other mundane task around the house or in the office, and we suddenly remember a wrong that was done to us in the remote past or last week. Or we find ourselves suddenly in the middle of a situation where we're being, where people are misunderstanding us, and we're pretty sure that we're not misunderstanding the situation. So instead of ruminating over the wrong, or arguing our rightness or their wrongness, getting caught up in that inner dialogue, that inner drama of you this and I that and who and so on. Just drop it, that's Sir John. Drop it because the toxins of hatred, anger and resentment are, are already beginning to cloud our awareness and, and they have physical consequences as can be seen from the scientific literature on the benefits of releasing hatred, the benefits of releasing resentment. So instead of ruminating, we release and let go, but let's use some images. Let's think of an image of, a, of, a, of an air balloon that we're holding on to. We're holding on to it. That's our, that's our holding on to our resentments. And we just let the balloon go and it floats away. It's as simple as that. Whenever a hatred, when, excuse me, whenever a cause of, of, of uh, whenever we feel that some event from the past uh, where we were wronged arises, we can practice this kind of radical letting go. We can let it, we can let it go as if we were letting a balloon uh, out of our hands. And we continue to release these events and memories until the toxins of hatred, anger, and resentment and grievance begin to fade. And now, you see, this is a basic ascetical practice. This is very much a part of any contemplative tradition. Even the expressions I was using, such as the toxins, the toxins of hatred, anger, resentment, you find these in Evagrius Ponticus, the great ascetical theologian in the early Christian traditions. You find this in the Vasudhi Magga and the other literature of Buddhism dedicated to sila, or the perfection of virtue. It's a very practical discipline. As long as these toxins are, uh, uh, are, are, are distorting or giving their tone to our mental state, we will find ourselves agitated. And not only will it have bad physical consequences and psychologically unpleasant uh, results as well, it'll make it impossible to meditate, to contemplate, if we sit down and instead of the calmness and clarity of mind that we need to go deeper in our meditative practice, we'll find ourselves caught up in, uh, in cycles of, of anger, resentment, of a lot of mental talk, a lot of mental chatter. And so by letting go these occasions, these 
of, of, uh, of wrongdoing to ourselves, these focal points, using these focal points, by letting them go through the act of forgiveness, we'll find that over a period of time, we start to become inwardly more composed. And in that composed state of mind, even if we're not great meditators, we'll start to notice calmness is a great benefit to have. How often do we have calmness of mind? And then that calmness is the prelude, the doorway into a deeper spiritual happiness.